Hello everybody, Gabriel Dupre speaking. Today, I would like to present you the objective of the Sun4H2 project, jointly led by TerraDewey and ifp -EN, which main goal is to describe and monitor hydrogen emissions by satellite imagery. So far, emissions of native hydrogen were considered as events mainly located at plate boundaries. But if you take a closer look at the image, they appear to be quite common also in the intracratonic areas. These emission zones are very interesting since they could serve, if exploitable, as a natural source of energy whose combustion would only produce water. The observation of LIDAR images in areas with high hydrogen emanations show specific topographic structures. The effect is the depression of a subsidence forming oval shaped rings. These elliptic structures are associated with a local topography depression and a modification of the vegetation. These phenomena, visible by satellites, have been highlighted previously in literature in several regions, as in Russia or in the United States, or two historical sites. Historical in the sense that we have an idea of the date of the apparition of the structures, thanks to the Google Earth images showing the evolution of the vegetation. In order to better understand the temporal evolution of the vegetation, we need to have a more extensive data sampling using visible satellite imagery. In addition, infrared images based on radiometry property will provide quantitative information on vegetation changes. Also, to quantify the spatiotemporal effect of hydrogen emanation on the surface deformation, we can use radar interferometry, in particular with Sentinel data, which allows short term of row visit and high resolution. The objectives of the Sun for H2 project are quite ambitious because they aim at finding a typical signature for H2 natural emissions areas and at automating H2 emission detection all over the globe. In addition to the two historical sites already mentioned, we are also interested in two other sites, one in the region of Minas Gerais in Brazil, equipped with permanent sensor for a continuous measurement of H2 emissions, and the second in the region of Burakebugu in Mali. These in-situ analyses, for example measurement campaigns performed in Russia and published by Larry Nettal, must be used to constrain the interpretation of satellite information. The first goal of the sun for h 2 project was to build a database associated with different structures where hydrogen emissions were characterized. The produced dataset covers five identified structures of different size and contains more than a thousand of satellite images acquired between 2002 and 2019 by several Earth observation satellites at different wavelengths from visible and near infrared to radar. In this process, an automated data processing chain was set up and operated to generate inside products over selected sites. Sentinel-1 ground range detected amplitude change products and Sentinel-1 coherence and intensity change products. They are both based on the SNAP toolbox and were deployed on cloud computing resources to feed the send for h 2 product database. This project also developed innovative methods of collaborative working. It's done using HELIP, a set of collaborative earth science services for a scientist to share our projects, simplify creation of a new data products, and make these accessible and usable. The analysis was achieved through the use of dedicated to Python notebooks that allows to share, process, and visualize the entire data collection. The data collection is a promising asset to improve our understanding of hydrogen continental air emissions. Thus, the existing notebooks represent a stepping stone to a more systematic data analysis and will also be useful for the next steps of the Stand for H2 project. Thanks for watching this video and feel free to contact us for further information.